Good evening to all my brothers and sisters around the world. Welcome to another Reflections at Bedtime. God has been so good to us. Psalm 27 tells us, verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God has been so good and great to me. How about you? How was your day? I hope and pray that your day was blessed and that you have joined me with Thanksgiving this evening as we reflect at bedtime. We reflect on the goodness of God. We have folk that are tuning in to worship with us from Guyana, from Barbados, from England, and all around the world. Good evening to you and welcome. We are grateful that you have joined us and together we will give God praise. We will honor him and glorify him because he is worthy to be praised. Bible tells us in um, verse 10 of chapter of Psalm 27 that when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. The Lord will take care of me. He is in the business of caring for us. In verse 14 says, Wait upon the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This evening, I'm so happy that God has brought us from the month of April into the month of May. He has sustained us. We had some ups and some downs. But here we are, the beginning of a new month giving God more glory and more praise because he's worthy to be praised. And I pray that, that the month of April was a really fruitful month for you. And I hope that as we go through May, that God will continue to bless us and grace us with favor and mercy so that we can continue to assemble and give him praise every evening. Let us give God some praise as we pray right now. Eternal Father and loving God, thank you. Thank you for favor. Thank you for grace. Your grace is amazing. It's sufficient for us. You love us all. It doesn't matter the color of our skin or nationality. It doesn't matter how rich, how poor we are. Your love is vast and it, it takes over the universe. It encapsulates <clears throat> our lives. And even though you are the creator of this universe, you, you are an individual God. And you attend to us individually, even more than our earthly parents. You being our heavenly father, love us so much that you sacrificed your only begotten son that we can have life and have it more abundantly. So bless us as we worship. May we reverence your name and honor you in all we do. May we have a peaceful and loving time as we fellowship with each other. And we praise you and thank you in the worthy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you that I am so happy that this month of May begins with folk giving their hearts to God. You know, the 1st of May um, was a Saturday and we went to church and I witnessed two of my Beloved brothers give their hearts to Jesus in baptism and I'm so happy because one of them is my son and I am so grateful that he has surrendered everything to Jesus. Now he's going to be faced with challenges but if he stays close to Jesus and hold on to God's unchanging hand, I promise you he will not go astray. God is in the business of saving souls. And heaven rejoice when one sinner converts, when one sinner turns over and give their lives to Christ, give their life to Christ. This evening, our reflection thought is taken from, I'm sorry, from um, Isaiah chapter 40. And we're going to start our little discourse from verse 28. But before we do that, 
we have an anchor an anchor is a heavy metal or iron that is lowered from a big ship to keep it still and though the storms may come that anchor as long as it is secure it holds that ship it may rock but most of the times it doesn't turn over that's who Jesus is to us he is our anchor he is our stronghold and in the storms of life Jesus will hold us in hold us still and steadfast as long as we hold on he's holding but we need to hold on to him we're going to talk about marathon strength this evening but before we do that let's listen to this beautiful song my soul is an anchor in the lord
Praise God. I love that song. The anchor holds. May Christ be your anchor today. We have a beautiful testimony from a dear sister. And it's amazing the strength she had to carry through with what she went through. And she considered it something that God put her through, brought her through. To make her the solid, loving Christian that she is today. You will be blown away as you listen to this testimony. Before Sister uh, Nancy comes on to give us her testimony, we're just going to continue to talk about our reflection thought, Marathon Strength. We already highlighted what... what um, a marathon is and how strong you have to be in order to make it to the end of the marathon um, but the Bible tells us in uh, Isaiah 40 um, the last few verses in Isaiah 40 I love it we're gonna start the uh, reading from verse 28 but the punchline is in verse 31 verse 28 says have you not known question have you not heard question the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable powerful statement Verse 31 says, well, let's continue reading. Verse 29 says, He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, He increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and even the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and never be weary. They shall walk and never faint. I love this verse. It's one of the verses that I memorized and it encourages me because the Bible tells us that if we wait, the Holy Bible tells us that if we wait upon the Lord, if we just get some strength and patience to wait on the Lord, he will renew our strength. He will help us to mount up with wings as eagles. I was listening to um, someone talk about the strength of an eagle or, or some attributes of the eagle. And we know that the eagle is a very strong bird, has a wide wind sp uh, wing span to, I think, on and about, depending on the age, um, and how big the um, eagle is, they can span their wings, stretch out as long as eight feet. That is marvelous. 
and they can fly and soar as high as 10, over 10,000 feet. That is high. And that eagle, the Bible tells us that he will give us the strength. Like an eagle, we will soar to heights. We will walk and we will not faint. Even young people faint. Young men, the Bible say. But he, God will give us the strength. And he has given Nancy the strength to endure what she had to go through. May this testimony strengthen you as you listen. And I pray that God will increase your strength and your patience and your faith. So that if you have to go through, and all of us do have trials, we will go through sometime or the other. May God give us this. May we quote the word and stay in the word of God. And may we be strengthened as we read God's word. Let's listen to Sister Nancy and her testimony. diabetic neuropathy, I didn't feel it. And then um, from there, my toe uh, got gangrene and it caused my foot to start dying. I had multiple surgeries. Um, and when it got to the point that the doctor said, we're going to have to amputate, my grandmother was like, uh, hold up, wait a minute. We got to pray about this because I ain't heard God tell me that. So I prayed about it. God said, if it offends you, suck it out. So I went back and told the doctor, it's got to go. I'm fine. Go ahead. Um, I literally, going into the operating room, I was singing and praising the Lord. That is the way I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. That is the way I woke up. Well, after all the pain. But the nurses, they remember me. Every time I came back to the hospital, because I had been in, going back and forth to the hospital for like two or three years. Like every three months, I was in the hospital for a month straight for something dealing with my leg. And every time I go in there, I have a smile on my face, and I be singing and praising the Lord. And I kept my door open, and they heard me, and they would come in there. And one lady, she came in, she said, you the one who was singing. I said, who, me? She, and she told me what song I was singing. I don't remember what song I was singing now, but she remembered. I said, yes, that was me. And so um, I just kept praising God, kept praising God, um, got my prosthetic leg, learned how to walk, and that, um, I told my mama, I said, I might be rolling in him, but I'm going to walk out. And when I went to the prosthesis, he taught me how to walk on the parallel bars. I went down one time, I was holding on with both hands. He said, now do it with one hand. I did it with one hand. He was sitting there talking to my mama. I kept walking, but I did it with no hands. When I left up out of Hanger Clinic, I walked out of Hanger Clinic, pushing my wheelchair out. <laughs> and um, from then on, I kept praising God, kept praising God. And then... I had a problem with my other foot. Matter of fact, before that happened, my Achilles tendon ruptured and it had to be removed. That was even before the foot got amputated. But about another year down the line, the circulation was failing, going to my foot. And this doctor had worked so hard with me, even with my first leg. It was when he first had come to... Um, the, the practice where he is, um, Ankle and Foot Centers in Georgia. But he, I could tell in his eyes, he was trying everything not to cry because he was so hurt that I had to lose this leg. And honestly, 
it did make me feel some type way because I was like, okay, Lord, I know whatever you got for me is for me, but why I got to lose another lead to do it? I said, okay, well, if this is your will, I talked to my aunt. We prayed over it. After we prayed over it, I was fine. I said, okay, well, let's do this. And we went. They took their leg off too. And then I went to rehab. Got me another prosthetic. And guess what, y'all? I'm still walking. I'm still, I drive my own car. Matter of fact, I drive my car the same way a person with two other feet. I don't have no special mechanism. I said, Lord, let these legs be an extension of the legs you originally gave me. Amen. Let me feel as if I would feel with those. And I have been driving ever since. And when I tell you, God will do it, you just keep on praying and praising, he will do it for you. You don't have to do nothing but give it all to him, and he will turn everything around. Because what the devil meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good every single time. I promise you, every single time. I do everything. Matter of fact, I said, Lord, well, I'm sitting here. I ain't got nothing else to do, but I want to work. Now, how I'm going to work? I don't want to go on nobody's job because I probably can't do what they want me to do like they want me to do it. So what I'm going to do? He said, well, you love to shop. And you got a little bit of creativity in you. He allowed me to start my own business and I go and walk around the stores just as easy as anybody else would well trust me if it's a big store then I'm gonna go get me a riding car but other than that I, I, I'm gonna walk because he gave me two legs to walk with and I'm gonna use them I tease people all the time I say I got legs and I know how to use them I sure do I know how to use them to get around, to do the things that God has purposed me to do. Mm -hmm. He has purposed me to tell people what he has done for me. And let me tell you one more thing. Whew, hallelujah. I was in the hospital. I got sick. I was out. I was out one day and I had come home and I laid down and went to sleep. I slept from a Friday to a Sunday. And the person's house who I was at, um, she noticed I started swelling up. So she called my mom and she said, we got to get her to the hospital immediately. My mom is the type of person that she don't really do well with that kind of stuff. So she was like, okay. So she sent my dad to come and get me. My dad and my brother, she sent him to come and get me. And they came me came to get me. They took me home. She told them to just bring me home. And so my dad was like, well, do you really want to go to the hospital? I was like, yeah, I need to go. So he took me to the hospital. I remember they gave me, they said my potassium was high at the time. They gave me something to lower my potassium. And I will remember nothing else from then personally. Only thing I can tell you is what was told to me because I was in septic shock. So I don't remember anything. I have no recollection of it. But um, they had to give me emergency dialysis. Um, and they was going to take me into surgery. But in dialysis, something happened and I started dying. And... The nurse told me, she said, I just kept speaking life over you. I just kept saying, live, live, live. And I kept praying over you. And my mom told me that they took me into surgery and the doctors came out and said that they didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> but my God, Amen. the God that I serve, <laughs> he had something different in mind. 
because I'm sitting here in front of you today to tell you this. He turned that situation around. Mm -hmm. He placed my feet on solid ground. He lifted me up. He gave me everything that I needed to push through. Every little bit of pain, I gave it to him. Every little bit of sorrow, I gave it to him. I did not worry about nothing. You ever heard him say, worry about nothing but pray about everything? <laughs> oh, Lord, it's true. Because <laughs> he hears the prayers of the righteous, and they avail of much. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, <laughs> right now today, God will do it for you. Yes, he will. You give it all to him. Every little bit of it. He said just to have a faith of a mustard seed. Do you know how small a mustard seed is? It is just one little speck. If you give him that much, he'll give you more. So much more than you could ever imagine. Good measures, press down, and <laughs> run in the over. He will do it. He will do it. God is good. Yes, he is. God. Amen. Oh, she has strengthened me. And I'm sure she has strengthened you too. God loves us so much. He's not willing that any of us should suffer and any of us should go through the things that we go through. But some of us do. And God is preparing us for a better work, for better things to come. So thank you so much, Sister Nancy. God is good, better than good. He's great to us. We want to continue to lift our sister up in prayer. And we want to continue to pray for souls as they give their hearts to Jesus. These are trying times. These are closing of earth history. We do not want to be left out of the kingdom of God. So let us do our part. Tell someone about the love of God. Live an exemplary life that people can read a sermon through the life you live and accept Jesus as their personal Savior from sin. That is all we have to live for. We can gain this whole world with, world with material things and big houses and fancy cars and all this type of stuff, but it will, will not gain us anything. It will not give us eternal life if we don't surrender our hearts to God. So I bid you this evening, Surrender your heart to Christ. Tell someone if you have already surrendered your life. To uh, tell someone about the love of God so they, they can be saved too. And we all can make it into the kingdom out of this sin-cursed world. God bless you. This evening we just want to remember the past tips that we have talked about, the health tips. And we want to go over them and practice them. So... Let's be um, encouraged as we study God's word and as we continue to share one with another the love of God. Let us pray right now and talk to the most marvelous and mighty God of gods. Let us pray. Father of love, thank you. Oh, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Lord, you have brought people through so much struggle. Sometimes we wonder where are you lord but help us to realize that you are ever present in our lives you are our anchor you hold us fast and lord when we go through if we just hold on to your unchanging hands we will be strengthened this evening we pray for our sister nancy that you would continue to bless her life and that she would use her talents to glorify you and to win souls for your kingdom we also pray for or brother who has surrendered his life to Christ, we just want to ask you that you cover, cover him with your blood and that his life, he will now take up the mantle and spread the gospel to save other souls. We thank you for the victory, O oh God. We are so happy for when one sinner rejoices, uh, repents and gives their life to you, we rejoice and we are happy. We thank you. Father, we pray that we would encourage each other every day in this walk of life and that we struggle from day to day. May we encourage each other 
We are so thankful that we can come to you and cry out to you, and you will hear and answer our prayers. God, we're continuing to pray for jobs for people who are seeking jobs. We're continuing to pray and ask that you would deliver people that are go some some of our brothers and sisters that are going through uh, illnesses, different sicknesses. You are the bomb in Gilead. Those that are, that have financial issues, you own the cattle on a thousand hills. You own this universe. You can provide for us. Oh God, we thank you for the victories that we have gained. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Bless our children, bless our parents, bless our families and friends near and far. And may we continue to serve you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh Lord, but when you come, may we not be found wanting, but we will go home into eternity with you and spend a life of freedom from sin. We long for that day. Prepare our souls and call us into your kingdom, we pray, as we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in the marvelous and the most precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen again. Good evening. God bless you. May you have a restful sleep. And I will see you on tomorrow for a little bit more of Reflections at Bedtime. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. See you on tomorrow. Remember, God loves you more than anything else in the world. And we have to share that love one with another. God bless you. Good night.